Hello. Um, next, we are going to be talking about one of the applications of PJT transistors, uh, of any transistor really, and that's the application of a switch. Uh, and that's not kind of the main concern of this course. In this course, we are going to be using the transistor to build amplifiers. Um, but, it, you know, it's another application that's very common. And so for, for completeness, uh, I just wanted to show an application where we're using the cutoff and saturation regions of the transistor just so that you see that, you know, those are also used in switching and digital applications typically. So just for completeness. Um, when we talk about the transistor as a switch, typically the type of connection that we have is as follows. We will have, in this case, uh, I'm using an MPN transistor, uh, some kind of input signal applied to the base, and then we will have a load connected to the collector of the transistor. And that just goes to a supply, VCC, let's call it. Now, uh, there's gonna be a resistance associated with that load, some load resistance. And um, you can see that, uh, you know, if I apply an input signal, V in, so that I turn on my base emitter junction. Um, initially, if I, if I, uh, my input signal is equal to zero, what I'm going to have is a transistor in cutoff, and so there's going to be no current flow through my load. So we consider the switch as being off. It doesn't allow current to flow. If I uh, turn on my transistor by applying a certain voltage into the base, in this case, because I haven't put any resistors there, uh, it will just be 0 0.7 volts to turn on that base emitter junction. Now I'm getting some current flow through my transistor, so some current flow through my load. Um, you can see that if I have a small load, meaning a small voltage drop uh, through my load, then uh, most likely my VCE voltage is going to be sufficient, sufficiently large to keep my transistor in the linear or active region. But normally when we're dealing with switching and digital applications, uh, we want to switch the transistor from, uh, from cutoff into saturation. Uh, there are reasons for that. Um, speed reasons, uh, but also maximum uh, voltage swing reasons that we won't get into. Uh, but we want to switch it all the way to saturation. Uh, for that to happen, I will need to have a load that is sufficiently large so that uh, most of my VCC will drop across the load. And so you can see that, you know, for any given current I see, uh, if I have a load that uh, uh, sufficient voltage drop across the load, then my VCE will be smaller than 0.3 volts, which means my transistor will be in saturation. So when I'm designing uh, the circuitry around my switch here, I haven't added any resistors or anything, so I will have very little to design. Uh, but if I do it properly, um, I will be able to play with these parameters to ensure the transistor is in saturation. Let's see an example of that. Let's consider a VJT switch that is trying to turn on or off an LED, an LED light. And so... I'm going to have my LED light, light emitting diode, connected to my transistor. Here I have added a, a small resistor at the collector, and that's just to be able to control the amount of voltage drop to ensure my transistor is in saturation. Uh, let's imagine that my VCC is 10 volts. And then I'm also going to put a resistor to be able to control my base current. Um, that's it. This is my input voltage. I'll call it V in. And let's say that my V in is going to be switching from zero volts to five volts. Those are my switch input levels. Uh, characteristics of my LED. Um, let's imagine that my voltage across the LED is 1.8 volts when it's on, and the current that I need to turn it on, I'll call it ILED, is equal to um, 1 milliamp, 10 milliamps. That's the way I have it in the activity, so let's keep it that way. All right, so um, let's start designing. I need to design this circuit so that uh, this LED light will switch or oh, this transistor will switch on and off that LED light. Uh, first thing, if I haven't been given a supply voltage value, I can choose a supply voltage value. The reasonable thing is to choose something that is 
larger than the in for obvious reasons. Um, and so what we want is that when the switch is on, when the LED is on, the transistor will be in saturation mode. And the easiest thing for that is that uh, we will make the voltage across the RC resistor be equal to my supply, 10 volts, minus whatever drops, drops across the LED. And so for an input voltage equals to 5 volts, I want... Um, the CE less than 0.3 volts, obviously. The easiest thing is just to make it uh, 0 volts. So choose VRC equal to VCC minus VLED. And minus 1.8 volts or 8.2. All right, but my RC that I want to calculate in that case is going to be equal to uh, the voltage across the resistor divided by the current, which is 10 milliamps if I want to have the LED on. And so RC is going to be equal to VCC minus VLED, meaning 8.2 volts, divided by my um, ILED. And so 8.2 volts divided by 10 milliamps or 120 ohms. Uh, normally a rule of thumb to keep the transistor in saturation. Uh, we talked about how in the linear region of operation uh, we have IC divided by IV being equal to beta. Not I beta, but IV. We call beta the current gain uh, when we're considering that, you know, uh, the base current is the input signal and the collector current the output signal. We say the collector current is equal to beta times IB, so we call beta the current gain. Uh, to keep the transistor in saturation, uh, safe assumption, safe rule of thumb is to uh, make that ratio equal to half of beta. Uh, when the transistor is in saturation, uh, we should mention, you know, the... the uh, current gain is typically not beta. The transistor is typically uh, run with what we call a forced beta, meaning as the base current increases, um, it gets to a point that the collector current cannot keep up in the same proportion, let's say. And so you're running it with a forced beta, a forced ratio of um, IC to IB that is not equal to the forward beta of um, typically 100 that we're familiar with. So when we are designing, if we try to make it just one half of the standard beta, uh, that's a pretty safe assumption to put the transistor in saturation. Uh, so this will be, uh, if we assume beta equal to 100, this will be um, 50. Okay, and so we have that my IB will be equal to IC over 50 or 10 milliamps over 50, which is 200 microamps. And now I can just design my value of RB uh, to make that happen. So RB maximum really will be equal to V in minus the 0.7 volts that I need to turn on my phase emitter junction divided by my IV. The end. I should call this IV saturation, but uh, I guess you get the point. So VE is uh, 5 volts. And it's 0.7 volts divided by 200 microamps. I guess I should put the unit in both. And that's equal to 21.5 kilo ohms. Uh, that's the maximum value for my base resistor. Obviously, I can go lower than that, and that will just make things better because it will increase the value of my uh, base current. And so I'm going to choose, uh, for sake of example, 10 kilo ohms. That's below the maximum value I just calculated. 
So choose RV equals 10 kilo ohms. And that's it. Now I can input those results into my circuit. I will have my RC. I calculated it's 820 ohms. My RV is equal to 10 kilo ohms. And I have my switch. Now, when we are using the transistor as a switch, we typically care about the switching characteristics, um, which is something that, again, we're typically not going to consider when we're designing amplifiers, but just so that we're familiar with the different um, characteristics that appear in the uh, in the EC table in the data sheet. So something that we uh, may want to determine are the on and off times, the switching on and switching off times for this transistor switch. So... Um, on and off times. In order to calculate those, we're going to need to um, use the values for rise time, uh, fall time, delay time, etc., that come out of the data sheet. And so, for the sake of example, we're going to pick a generic small signal uh, purpose, um, general purpose transistor, which is the 2N3904. And you have the data sheet for the transistor on the course website. And so as we turn the input signal, switch the input signal on and off, this is V in, going from zero volts to five volts. Uh, we want to know how long will it take for the output um, to reach the final levels, both here in the turn on and turn off transition. And so there are several things that happen here. Um, first, it takes, um, there is something called the delay time, and that's just the time it takes from the time I turn, I switch my input signal to the time my uh, output signal starts to switch. And so, let's see. I'm going to first just draw the whole thing, it's a little easier. I'm going to mark the 10% points and the 90% points on my output voltage signal. All right, this is 10% voltage swing and 90% voltage swing. And so we first have the delay time, as I mentioned, right? That is from the time I switch on my input to the time my output reaches that 10% level. That's called the delay time. Maybe I should do it with a different color. If we look at my data sheet, delay time TV is 35 nanoseconds. All right. Then I have my rise time, that is the time it takes for the output to go from the 10% point to the 90% point, that's fairly standard definition. And so I'll put that in uh, orange, perhaps, and that's going to be... my rise time. In the case of the um, 3904, it's 35 nanoseconds. And so my whole uh, turning on time is going to be the addition of the rise time plus the delay time, or the delay time plus the rise time. So I can calculate it now as being my T on equals TD plus TR, or 35 nanoseconds plus 35 nanoseconds for a total of 70 nanoseconds. And likewise, there is a delay between the time I switch my input signal off to the time my output signal um, comes all the way down. And so we um, have parameters to deal with that. Those are called the storage time and the fall time. The storage time being the time it takes from the time the input signal drops 
uh, to the time my output reaches that 90% point or has gone down by 10%. Uh, let's see, I don't want to use the same colors, so I'm going to use purple for this one. So there is this time, and it's typically, uh, the storage time is typically large, so maybe I'm going to represent this a little bit more accurately. I delete the whole thing. Huh? That's okay, we can rebuild it. And then I'm going to do that a little bit more accurately. So there is some storage time, we said. Um, TS, which in the case of this transistor is 200 nanoseconds, and uh, the, the term storage should have suggested to you that it is related to the um, capacitances having to discharge, and that's absolutely right. And finally, we have uh, the fall time, which is the time it takes for the output of the transistor to go from that 90% point to that 10% point. TF. All time. I mean, the case of this transistor is 50 nanoseconds. And so the overall off time is equal to the addition of the two, the storage time plus the fall time, or 200 plus 50, which comes out to be 250 nanoseconds. Oops. Kind of went back to the previous activity. 250 nanoseconds. Um, and that's it. That's, uh, again, just one switching application uh, for you to see how the transistor will be used as a switch. Uh, it's perhaps the, the simplest application of transistors. Um, you can perhaps take a look in the textbook at how the transistor can also be used to implement digital logic. Uh, the focus of this course, though, is going to be on using the transistor as an amplifier. And so in future activities, we're going to be exploring uh, that behavior, and therefore we're going to be using the transistor in the linear region of operation, as opposed to cutoff and saturation, as we saw in this application. Thank you.